uh, Holy Spirit's been working really overtime in me, and uh, I'm so grateful. There's something, there's something in the faithfulness of God that just blows my mind um, on, a, on a regular basis. As, like, for instance, of you know, pre preparing a message each week or um, any time is is so awesome to know that the Holy Spirit's working in that time, in that time of the preparation, in that preparation time. And then we, we get here and, and, he, and he starts to work again. And so sometimes there's little rabbit trails here and there that he takes us on. But, you know, so far it's been pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty organized. We've been talking, we talked about forgiveness a couple of weeks ago. I think that was an awesome uh, message. I want to. I'm going to revisit that eventually um, because there's just so much there. Um, we talked about hearing God and how to hear God, and today we are going to uh, talk about spiritual strongholds. How bad are they? How bad are they? These spiritual strongholds. Because when when we read the Bible you will at some point come across the word stronghold or strongholds or in King James it's two words stronghold in every other version it's one word strongholds but when I hear the word stronghold up in you know for most of my Christian life the next things that come to mind are uh, biblically when I think about them in the Bible is that uh, is like breaking free or tearing down or deliverance or demolishing or overcoming right I mean that's when you think about strongholds you want to figure out what to do to break down these strongholds well the a stronghold is defined as a place that has been fortified so as to protect against uh, attack a place where a particular cause or belief is strongly defended or upheld. Strongholds are designed to be a safe place. You notice this castle up here. That is a safe place back in those days before artillery. Um, you know, that would be pretty hard to attack that, that castle. That is a stronghold. As believers in Christ, we need to make the Lord our stronghold. He is our safe place. He is our refuge. So it doesn't always have to be something demolished, something overcome, something tear, torn down. Let's look at Psalms 21, Psalm 21, I mean 27, uh, verse 1 in the NIV. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? kind of like this song we sang today whom shall I fear the Lord is the stronghold of my life of whom should I be afraid and throughout the Old Testament God speaks of uh, speaks through the prophets about how <clears throat> he, he will um, how the how he will uh, destroy enemy strongholds. And most of the time, there are places like this. They're, 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 they're fortresses. They're, they're physical places. Uh, Amos uh, chapter 1, verse 7. But I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the palaces thereof. And in verse 10. But I will send a fire on the wall of Tyrus, which shall devour the palaces thereof. And Amos 12. But I will send a fire upon Teman, which shall devour the palaces of Borza. In Hosea 8.14, that for Israel hath forgotten his maker and buildeth temples, and Judah hath multiplied fenced cities. But I will send a fire upon his cities, and it shall devour the places thereof. While these places, while these are references to uh, physical places, they're really, they can be seen as metaphors to spiritual things. The word strongholds is used metaphorically in the New Testament really only once, and that's in 2 Corinthians uh, verse uh, chapter 10 verses 3 through 5 Paul writes for though we walk in the flesh we do not war according to the flesh 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. This passage shows that shows us that spiritual strongholds are arguments. So what, what he does is here, he uses strongholds as a metaphor in verse 4 for pulling down strongholds. And then he goes in verse 5 and tells you what those strongholds are. Those strongholds are arguments. Um like lofty opinions that's a stronghold and every high thing that is raised against the knowledge of God or held in esteem over God above God those are strongholds because they they rely on ourself strongholds rely on ourself they lead to a prideful heart, um, unhealthy thought patterns. We're going to get into some thought stuff here in a minute. And habitual sins that we just can't seem to overcome. Anybody have a, anything like that in their life ever? Oh, yeah, one hand. Okay, two hands. All right. Oh, three, four, five. Okay. So, so it's, a good me it's going to be a good message. I'm, it really is. Because strongholds are only arguments, lofty opinions, and putting things, esteeming things above God. That's all they are. It's not that big a deal. Well, one of the reasons that we have them is because we can't seem to understand that we we can't seem to see ourselves the way that God sees us. We can't seem to agree with God the way that he sees us that's right that's right it, it really is because that because that's that's humility to agree with God the way he sees you is humility everything else is pride so if you're going to argue with God <laughs> that's pride if you're going to hold things, lofty opinions about yourself or other things other than God, then that's pride. Um, anything that we, that we trust in besides the Lord can become a spiritual stronghold. Can become a spiritual stronghold. And I, I'm, I say stronghold, I don't mean it's no big deal because it can be. It, it can get to be a really serious stronghold that begins to we've, we've seen it in ourselves and sometimes we've seen it in other people but because strongholds are spiritual the battle to fight them takes place uh, in the spiritual realm and needs to be fought with spiritual weapons Ephesians 6 10 through 18 affirms all that we're going to read some of those verses here but it affirms that the weapons of our welfare are not carnal weapons, but spiritual ones that enable us to stand strong against the devil's schemes, or it calls them wiles. These are the weapons that God has provided for us. We're going to take a look at this. Ephesians, which is 14 through 18. The first thing you do is stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having girded your waist with truth. So keeping your nose in the Bible and keeping your nose in the Word of God is girding your waist with truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, seeing, agreeing with God as to how He sees you. you. We have the righteousness of God. If we are born again, if we are born from heaven, we have the righteousness of God. So that's the breastplate in this battle against strongholds. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of grace. The gospel of Jesus Christ. All the way through the Old Testament from Genesis to Revelation. This entire gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of grace runs through the entire Bible. But that's what, that's what our shoes, that's what carries us. 
That's what we stand in. And above all, taking the shield of faith. And where does the faith come from? Here, where, do we, where, does faith, where do we get faith? What, how does it come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Everything is based on the word of God here. Everything. It is an, it's an important thing to be able to read your Bible once in a while. Like a lot. <laughs> With which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. You want to know how to rebuke the devil? Just look at the instruction book. You know, it's about that thick, most of them. And some of them are just, I have hundreds of them in my phone. And they're instruction books on how to not be tricked by the devil. It's, it's right there. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It's all the Word of God. Praying always with all power and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. There's, there's so much there. If we're wise, we'll tear down these spiritual strongholds. Because um, that will help us to restore our full trust back in Jesus. Because if we're off into some spiritual stronghold, then it means that part of our trust is gone. Part of our trust in Jesus is not there. Our trust is going to ourself or, or something else or someone else. In Pro, uh, Proverbs uh, 21, verse 22 says, A wise man scales the city of the mighty and brings down the trusted stronghold. So if it is, if it is like, look like you have to climb this wall of a, of a city, if it looks like that to you, a wise person, it says here, will do it. And somewhere that trust has to come back because you know you're not going to be able to do it on your own. That trust has to come back. You just start the process of climbing that, mi that mighty wall of a mighty city, of that stronghold. Tearing down strongholds is not easy sometimes. It's, it's, it, it isn't. It's challenging. And when we begin to fight, we will most certainly experience resistance. You will definitely feel resistance. And there can be both carnal resistance and spiritual resistance or demonic resistance. But Christ's power enables us to um, be free from both of those things. Christ's power enables us to be free from both of those things. And it, it, and it enables us to, uh, it gives us the ability to operate in his power. We, we, last, last week or the week before, we talked about, I think, in here, the gifts of the Spirit. Maybe it was something else, but someplace else. But the Christ's power comes through the Holy Spirit. And, we, and, he, and when we do that, um, He gives us that ability to operate in His power to overcome these strongholds. Instead of depending on ourselves and being in bondage, we can fully place our trust in God and His love for us and make Him the only stronghold that we have. Put our faith in God and, and, and trust in Him and make Him our stronghold. Uh, Psalms 18.2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Here's a new, here's a new perspective. I, I think this is a new perspective. It, it, is, it is for me, it has been for me. That even though we'll experience the resistance when we begin destroying spir uh, spiritual strongholds, we can really remain confident that um, when we're doing this, I want you to get this really because it's really good. Um, so I don't want to mess it up. 
when, when we begin that process, we start that process of, of going against a stronghold. Um, and I'm talking about, you know, just a habit. You want to you break a habit? That's kind of a stronghold, a bad habit. Uh, is, is, is like a stronghold. It, is just, it isn't necessarily a castle like that. It might just be a little place where you can hide and you don't get attacked because you know that this habit is just, you know, it's just a habit, but it's causing problems. But we can know that um, when, we, when we begin that process, and we actually start doing that, and we start fighting that, um, that stronghold, and we start feeling the resistance against that habit, against that stronghold, that we are helping to build Christ's church. Does that make sense? Yet? Does? It took me a while to figure it all out. Because he won't allow the enemy to win. That's been done. That's been taken care of. Let's look at uh, Matthew 16, 18. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. The gates of Hades shall not prevail against my church. And when we are breaking habits and we are breaking strongholds with the help of Jesus Christ, not on our own, then we are furthering the cause of the church. And because God is not a respecter of persons. Let's go back to the previous two verses before, before 18, Matthew 16, 15, and 16. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And then verse 18, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. We all born, everyone born again in here has the same revelation that Peter had. Even more so, I believe. We have the same revelation, because God is not a respecter of persons. And he told, Jesus, God, told this to Peter. You didn't figure that out, Peter. You had a revelation from God. And upon that revelation am I building my church that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And we all have that. So I think, I believe, you know, let's, I'm going to change up the change up this verse a little bit. Uh, if you can put uh, 15 and 16 back up there. Um, and I'm going to change the, the words a little bit. I know you're not supposed to do that in the Bible, but I'm going to do it anyway. He said to Grace and Faith Family Church, But who do you say that I am? Grace and Faith Family Church answered and said, Let's say it together. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I also say to you, Grace and Faith Family Church, that you are the rock. And upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. We have that revelation, and we have to keep it in our hearts and keep it, in, keep it out front. I, because really, the war is over. Jesus has already won the war. We're just dealing with strongholds in our own personal life, and most of the time, a stronghold is right here, right between our ears. It's just in our heads. But Jesus has already won the war. Psalm 144, 1 and 2 says, Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who train, trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield, and the one in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people un under me. 
So he's already taken care of it. And sometimes we decide that we really have to sweat this thing out. You know, we gotta really, uh, I gotta figure out what to do with this person or what to do with that. Or, you know, it's just, we continually, continually do that. And he's already won the war. He's given us the, the, the helmet of salvation and the, and the shield of faith and the breastplate of righteousness. All of those things are in us and we just have to learn about that through the, through the word so that they, it just comes out in those rivers of living water that are supposed to flow out of us, out of our spirit into, our, into a, the natural and the, our soulish and the, and the natural realm. Because it, it really is our responsibility to be warriors for Christ. It really is. And, and it is our responsibility to tear down strongholds and, and fight the spiritual batters, battles here on earth using those weapons that God's given us. It's our responsibility. This is a, this is a great group here. This is a great group of people because I understand, because I, I, I kind of beginning to get to know most, most people here and, and some of the new people that are here today is just, I know that who, who invited you and so I got an idea of where, you know, that this is all good stuff for you. There's some newer believers in here and there's some older believers in here. But it's all good stuff. It is good stuff. Um, because even though the, we're in a, a, a fierce battle, which I said most of it is between our ears, really, when you get into these battles that I, I'm here, you know, I hear that people have these battles. It's most of it is in our is in our head, is in between, is in our brains, in our in our minds. Um, we can be confident knowing that we are on the winning side every time. So there's no reason to ever give up. It, it, you know, it gets, it gets tough sometimes. I, I, you know, a good example here, I'm going to... Do you mind if I make an example of you, George? <laughs> you know, um, that's just one in here. There are others. But George has been battling stuff ever since a long time I, I don't know since I've known well maybe not since I've known but he's been going through some stuff and he does not give up there was a tendency at one point probably where he wanted to just give up and it would have been easier to just say you know what I just want to go I'm tired but he did not give up he has got th things to do God has a plan for him and this goes for everybody here even if you're not going through any kind of major physical challenges and stuff like that, you're still going through some stuff. Don't give up because you're on the winning side. There's just, you don't have, you know, it's not, it's like watching a football game and knowing who the winner is. You just get in it and you just go because you know you're winning. You're going to win. But you just go. You keep going. Because the only way you'd lose is if you don't, is, is if you quit. And you still go to heaven, but you know, you're not taking too many people with you if you quit. So there are two very distinctive and very destructive and common strongholds. And we're going to talk about those now. Um, the first one we've kind of mentioned already. And that is where um, you see God incorrectly. That is one of the major strongholds in the body of Christ today, is how we see God. What we think of, when we, when we think about God, what are we thinking of? What are we thinking? To have an incorrect image in your mind of who God is and how he sees us. So people who, who see God as a taskmaster uh, live their lives with an unhealthy fear of God. I can't remember if it was in here that I mentioned about when I was a kid growing up and I would hear my dad say, yeah, well, you know, the, the washing machine broke because God's trying to keep us humble. You know, we just save up enough money and then the washing machine breaks. And when you grow up with those kind of things, that's a taskmaster, thinking that God is a taskmaster. And when you're nine and 11, and seven, and you grow up with those kind of things, and I know a lot of people in here probably did, 
then they, they linger. Those things linger and they become a stronghold. And God opens those up as we get into the word, as we, as we understand his word, that he opens those things up. But be, you can be really fearful. You can have this fear of God that he's going he's gonna to strike us. You know, I can't save up this money because, I, you know, not, not my car will break. It just always, and, and the more your thoughts go in that direction, the more chances are that those things are going to happen. Because it's how, what we think is, what, is what, what we focus on is what manifests. There's a good kind of fear of God, which is awe and respect, and, that's, and that fear of God is good. And, um, but the other kind is very unhealthy. And not only is it unhealthy, but the enemy wants us to have that kind of fear of God so badly because, I've mentioned this before, you know, Satan is only one Satan. He's not omnipresent. He's, he can't just be anywhere just like God. And he has so many cohorts that he's got to do, that get to do his, his wiles and his schemes. And... I, I think that if, if one of his cohorts can get us to thinking that God is a taskmaster and get that deep in our heart, he could just go off and talk to somebody else and work on somebody else because, you know, because it's just going to take over. We'll just, we'll, just be, we'll just have a miserable life. And yeah, maybe we'll die and go to heaven because we're born again and because we you know, believe that Jesus died for our sins and, and rose again from the dead and reconciled us with God and that's all great. But as long as I feel like God is a taskmaster, it's not a chance, there's not too much of a chance that I'm going to lead anybody else to Christ. And that's what the devil wants believers to not do. So he can get you thinking that God is a taskmaster and he could just walk off and go off by his own and just let you linger along and do your thing, mow your lawn and whatever else you like to do and don't be don't be rustling the flavor the, the, the don't make you making waves or or saying the name of Jesus. Don't be saying the name of Jesus. There's power in that name of Jesus. Did we did we did we get that this morning? There's power in that name of Jesus. And we don't we don't if he can get us to not say the name of Jesus, then that's all he needs to do. He can go off. We're born again. We're going to heaven. He can't do anything about that. But he can keep us from getting other people to be, to be born again. So, um, people who are afraid the, they've committed an unpardonable sin are almost guaranteed to have a stronghold. And almost guaranteed that they will not be talking to anybody about Jesus. Even if they are born again or going to heaven. can almost guarantee. I've known people like that. One of them died. And I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know if he was born again or not. But my heart has just always kind of been. I, and I just barely met the guy like one, one or two times. And, but it was. It, it, I, know what that, I know what that is where people are afraid they've committed a sin that is completely unforgivable of course I don't know what it was but it doesn't matter the fact that the fact that, the, that, that can happen is um, you know it's just, it was beyond me I, and I tried I talked to him and I was, it was way before Karis Bible College and all that but anyway um, also people who find it hard to feel God's love and presence often have this same stronghold of God as a, as a taskmaster. These are kind of symptoms. So if you feel that God is distant and cold or you question if God loves you, then it's time to get start tearing down the stronghold. And now we're going to talk a little bit about how to. But the second one, before we get there, the second one that is uh, uh, distinct and destructive and fairly common in the body of Christ is... One where you see yourself inaccurately. And we've been working on that here, I believe. Um, people who suffer from this have a hard time seeing the new person that, that they are now in Christ. A really difficult time seeing that. 
They often suffer from a low self-esteem, which there's a whole teaching right there. Uh, it, you know, we need to have Christ esteem, but low self-esteem is not good. Low self-esteem is very prideful. Um, they don't understand what Christ did for them and, and how it applies to their life. It just, they ju it's, just hard to, it's just hard for people to understand that sometimes. The common symptoms of this stronghold are guilt feelings. People feel guilty questioning if you've ever really been forgiven of your sins. Uh, low self-esteem, like I mentioned, they feel like sinners and not saints. They lack the spiritual confidence that we are supposed to have in Jesus Christ. The spiritual conf confidence that we are supposed to have in Jesus Christ. And they may still struggle with sin. And Jesus said that if you keep, if you keep in his word, which tears down strongholds, you will be free from the power sin has over you. John 8, 31 and 34. I don't have that on the screen, but you might want to jot that down. John 8, 31 through 34. And then overall, the, another symptom overall is that you don't feel worthy spiritually. Um, and lack the joy of the Lord in your life. Now, here's a great book for anybody who has any of those symptoms. It's called The Believer's Authority by Andrew Womack. There's other Believer's Authority books, and they're, they're probably as good. I don't know. I haven't read those. But The Believer's Authority by Andrew Womack is, is a good book to understand the authority that you have. Essentially, spirit, soul, and body concept really needs to be foundational to that, though. If you can, if you can read or understand or take that course or whatever. Spirit, soul, and body is so foundational. It's difficult to understand a lot of these concepts unless you totally get that you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. And all of the things that go with that. It's hard to understand strongholds if you, can't, if you don't quite have that. If you still feel like you have a stronghold, like you're battling a stronghold after this message today, if you still feel like that, which many of you may, but uh, it might be time for a different strategy. And this is a strategy that we're trying to develop in this church. And um, that is that we do not grit our teeth and redouble our efforts. That's not the strategy. <laughs> it doesn't work. It just makes things worse. That's the way of the flesh. Our weapons are the ones that we've just talked about earlier. And so you might be saying, well, then, you know, I've tried all those things and haven't gotten the results that I'd like to see. I haven't seen any manifestation. That's the words that I hear a lot recently. Well, I've done this and I've done that, but I haven't seen any manifestation. Um, Here's a new perspective, another new perspective. We've got two new perspectives today. Have you asked others to help you? Probably not, because everything inside says, keep the struggle secret. Don't let anybody know. Wear a mask. What's that? Yeah. Hide the pain. Wear a mask. Don't, don't let anybody know. That's the nature of our human condition. But we're talking about the spiritual realm there. So I'm saying that God says just the opposite. And I, I use the message uh, version here in James 5.16. He says, Make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can live together whole and healed. Amen? So you have to... Um, because, you know, Satan and those co cohorts, they, they live in that dark realm where you're keeping all these secrets. That's dark in there, you know? And you're holding these secrets and this stuff, these strongholds down, and you're keeping them in the dark, and that's the realm that Satan and his buddies like to live in. And that's how they work. That's how they crawl in and, and, and they get in through the cracks of, of your life and and... And again, like I said, after a while, they don't even need to hang around. It's in here. 
But what's that? Yeah, yeah, it's attack and it's, it, 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 it needs to have warfare. But here's the thing, God lives in the light and honesty. So we do need to bring those things up from that darkness and give them out to the light. Give them out to the light. Bring your problem out of, of the darkness and into that light so that, so that it can... So, and there's two things that happen there. Immediately. Five words. Immediately. <laughs> or six. Um, they become weak. Right? You bring those secrets out of the dark and bring them into the light, they just start to get weaker and weaker and weaker. Because they're not being held down there along with all the other demons that are <laughs> floating around down there. So I'm saying you find someone you trust and you start there. Really. This would be a great um, small group for some of you. And when I say small group, I'm talking just three, four, two, three, four people in your home once a week on a regularly scheduled time, whatever time works. Get together and just do a study on strongholds. Do a study on bringing stuff out of the darkness into the light. Check in with me if you want to do something like that. I'll give you some, some stuff to work with. Because it's important that we communicate to each other um, and, and really that's that's the message for today I, I'm, I'm not going to let you out early though um, because I wanted to do this before we did testimony time because I know there's some people in here that want to testify today and I want to hear I want to hear what everybody what everybody might want to say so